All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, excited to spend the evening with you. Hope you have had a great week. Uh, and we are almost over, folks. We are almost to Friday. We are almost to the weekend. And I hope that you are ready for it. Um, Tuesday, if you were um, watching with us, uh, you, you know we had a big chapter, chapter nine. What's up, Michael? Good to see you. What's up? What's up? Uh, welcome and happy Thursday to you too. Uh, you know that on Tuesday we had a really, really big chapter that uh, that uh, we went through, chapter nine, and so much happened, right? Uh, Noctis uh, went to Altitia. We got to have some nice uh, Italian Venice-like cuisine. We rode about a billion gondolas, um, and uh, we, we got to spend a, a good time in this place. We got to see a wedding dress uh, that, that the boys made a, a really big deal about, um, a little anticlimactic, somebody in my class said today, um, but still pretty good. Um, and we, we got to see Luna. We got to see Luna fulfill her role as a prophet. We got to see her um, in action as she was, um, as she was uh, delivering her uh, prophetic speech as an oracle, um, speaking directly to Noctis for the first time in 12 years, by the way. Uh, you might you might have missed that. Um, that was the first time that she and Noctis had laid eyes on each other in 12 years. And because she couldn't speak to him freely and openly, um, she, she used the chance of giving a, a, an oracle's address to speak to Noctis, some really interesting things. So that's, that's uh, pretty close to what kings and prophets would do back in the days of the Old Testament. So anyway, there was that. Uh, Michael, uh, it's okay. I am glad that you are doing um, well, uh, and I, I, I am doing wonderful, so thank, thank you for that. Um, I hope that you'll go back and watch Chapter 9, Michael. It was, a, it was a tearjerker, and it was so good, so, so, so good, and we talked a lot about a bunch of stuff. Um, I wanted to pick back up right where we left off because we left in a really tough spot, right? Luna uh, died. Hey, hey, lobster, welcome. Good to see you again. Um, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, we left in a tough spot. Luna has been stabbed by Arden, and uh, you remember that she tried to heal Arden, um, and, and then Arden slapped that away, slapped her away. So um, that, that was a pretty intense moment. And Luna said that she would give the ring to the rightful king and that those thralled in darkness would know peace when the prophecy is fulfilled and that's what she said as she tried to heal Arden and that's such a really important piece of this I wanted to pick back up with that closing cutscene as Noctis is um, is injured and Luna is healing him though because there's one thing that we forgot to mention that actually came up in my class today and I wanted to start the stream out with that today. So we're going to turn right over and watch that. Uh, let me change a few settings here. There we go. And we will go ahead and hit this button real quick so it kind of pauses that music. And let's watch this scene together. Here we go. Alright, so there's the end of Leviathan. We see that. But then we get this scene, and this is what I really wanted us to focus on right here. It's done. So a few things here. First of all, this moment right here, um, we see that uh, Luna is is uh, placing her hands on Noctis's forehead. This is a, a typical um, thing that prophets would do, anointing the um, the uh, future kings with uh, with their hands and usually anointing them with oil. Uh, but we see that she is both healing him and she is in some ways anointing him. This is after legitimizing his kingship by calling on the kings. Uh, let me actually try to pull in my um, my uh, webcam onto that scene. I see that it is not there. 
right now. Give me just one second. Boom, there we go. Oh my gosh, I'm gigantic. Okay, let's, there we go. Proper place right there. Perfect. Okay, so we see here that, that uh, Luna is healing him as well as anointing him. Let's keep going because the next thing that happens is huge. All right, notice here what, what Titan is doing. So Titan appears out of nowhere and ends up protecting Noctis from Leviathan. Now, this is such an interesting piece, right? This is one of the, the most interesting pieces, of I, I think, of this entire game. Now, in my class, if you're, if you're taking my class, then this is going to be a little bit of a recap. Um, but uh, there are six attributes that uh, we, we like to talk about regarding the, um, the, the God of the Old Testament of Jewish and uh, early Christian history. And those six attributes, um, I think, correspond with these six gods um, in some way. Now, um, each one of these gods tests Noctis according to um, the, the attribute that he or she represents. So first of all, you've got Titan. Titan does what? Titan protects the earth, the creation, by um, holding the meteor above his head. That's a really big, um, big moment, um, and that, that's kind of what he does. And so when he tests Noctis, it's not really that he's angry at Noctis or anything like that. He's testing Noctis to see if he is able to have this reverence for the creation. Are you going to kind of enact God's, uh, the God's creational intention for uh, humanity and for, for the whole world. And so then you've got Rama. Rama uh, tests Noctis by having him forage through the land, right? To, to, to follow lightning bolts and to find these stones and to essentially find a way to provide. So you've got creation or creational intention. Then you've got provision. And then we come to Leviathan. What we said on Tuesday night was that Titan embodies, or excuse me, Leviathan. Leviathan embodies regret. Leviathan embodies sorrow, grief. And it's the sense that uh, you might say, why, why, does, why do we say that Leviathan embodies regret instead of wrath? Well, it's for some of the things that she says uh, to Luna. Luna um, is saying, you know that Noctis is the chosen king. And you know that humanity is, is worthwhile. And Leviathan says, no, um, they, are, they are nothing but a disappointment to me. And uh, she exhibits this sense of regret of what humanity could have been, but now uh, has, has fallen from. And so here um, in the trial of Leviathan, it's certainly a battle, but notice what happens in the midst of it, right? If the first trial for Titan uh, of Titan was a trial for Noctis to determine his own, you know, reverence and love for creation, his ability to protect creation, and the second was Noctis' ability to provide, the third one with Leviathan is a trial of regret, a trial of sorrow. And who enacts that more than anybody? Well, it's Arden, who stabs and kills Luna. In fact, to the point that he definitely calls a Arden calls out to Noctis and says, Hey, oh Prince, your bride awaits after he stabs her. So he's wanting to make sure that Noctis is getting this regret and this sorrow piece. And so then we come to this scene that we've got up here in the um in the uh um yeah, on the on the screen here. Titan is protecting Noctis from Leviathan, which means that there seems to be some sort of tension among the gods. And when we think about this in terms of the attributes, what does it mean for creation to be in conflict with this attribute of sorrow or regret? Um, this is something that we talked about in my class a little bit earlier today, and I thought it was so interesting that you have 
a, a, in the Old Testament at least, a God who wants creation to be good. It wants creation to flourish. And then you also have this same God who regrets making humanity, and so he sends the flood in Genesis chapter 6. You have a God who wants to wipe out the Israelites, but Moses intercedes and says, no, don't do that. And so we kind of see that some of these attributes of God um, not, aren't inconsistent, but they are at odds with one another. So I, I just wanted to share that with you as we start out tonight because it's kind of a huge deal moving forward. Uh, the gods are not really um, at one with one another. Okay, so there, that's enough of that. Tonight, I want to start out um, uh, after that by thinking about chapter 10 because chapter 10 is all about Ignis. You might know that uh, just as we had an episode Gladio, there's also an episode Ignis uh, DLC, um, and uh, we will play that in just a few chapters, even though it happens right now during Altitia. Okay, so you actually get to find out how Ignis got injured. I want to play just the first few minutes of episode Ignis because I think that it's really important to chapter 10. Let's watch together. A king cannot lead by standing still. A king pushes onward always, accepting the consequences and never looking back. That said, a king can accept nothing without first accepting himself. Should he stand still, I ask you to stand by him and lend him a hand, as his friend and as his brother. Please, take care of my son. Sweet not this. Love that sweet boy. I'm afraid... I must ask your forgiveness. Tell a bloody thing here. Let's make for the altar. That's cool, isn't it? Uh, that, that makes us want to play Episode Ignis. But because of some story reasons, we will not play it just yet. But man, uh, it, it's cool. Uh, and you see that Ignis is separated from Gladio Prompto um, during the events at Altitia. All right, with that, let's go ahead and dive in to Chapter 10. Ignis! Michael, who's your favorite? Is it Ignis? We'll see in chapter 10 that there is a tonal difference, um, as you can imagine, um, between um, when they were riding around in the, uh, in the regalia all the way to... Uh, to now so pretty big difference is a little bit more somber which you can imagine not this has lost a ton of people at this point the body count is pretty pretty high for 
poor but uh, poor, poor 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 not this excuse me prompto baby Several weeks later. So, we're gonna roll through Tenebrae. Not before visiting the royal tomb at Gartanigo. Oh, uh, you're sure you're up to that? The wounds have mended. I say it's a matter of time. What the hell is wrong with you? What? We're not stopping in Tenebrae. You need to grow up and get over it. I am over it. I'm here, aren't I? Maybe when you're not too busy moping, you can look around and give a shit about someone worse off than you. Let go of me. How's that ring fit you? You'd rather carry it around than wear it? <laughs> she gave her life so you could do your duty, not so you could sit around feeling sorry for yourself. You don't think I know you that? You don't! Ignis took one for you, too. And for what? Enough, Gladio. You think you're a king, but you're a coward. Shut up! Don't do this! I... <laughs> I get it, all right? I get it! Then get a grip. Pull your head out of your ass already. Not! Leave him. <laughs> yeah, Gladio's pretty hard on Noctis here. So the ring, he hasn't put it on yet. I think that's a really key thing uh, that Gladio is saying to him. You'd rather carry it around than wear it. He's not accepting the responsibility yet. We're free to roam around the train. So we can kind of look out the window. It's kind of pretty. Such drama. We'll be on foot in Gartanica. Uh, fair. Thanks. Um, check. Uh, we are not stopping the train. What's back here? Hey, guys. The newspaper. The Oracle Lady Lunafrey of Tenebrae lost her life when her summoning of the Hydrian went terribly awry. Lady Lunafreya was swept under the Altitian waves alongside her fiancé, Crown Prince Noctis of Lucis. Despite falling unconscious for several days, the prince made a miraculous recovery and is currently being treated. Uh, are we going the right way? No, I don't think we are. So, yeah, the newspapers. Talking about Luna. It's sad. Uh, the Tree of Castino. Castino. Scientists have yet to provide a sound explanation as to why the resource-rich Fodna Castino has been overrun by an enormous tree. Some experts insist, however, that this floral phenomenon may have been a paranormal prelude to the awakening and annihilation of the gods. Ooh. What's up, Fitz? How much longer? Not long, dear. For a miraculous recovery to hurt. Yeah. Oh, awkward, Gladio. Yeah. 
I mean, it's it's sad. It's also the first time that they had been together in 12 years. They were supposed to even get married. It just... I wasn't looking at anyone. Also, that couple seems to be having all kinds of problems. <laughs> she accused him of looking at other girls. Oh, man. Problems. Uh, look at the party in the uh, dining car. What's up with these guys? Okay, a radio. In the wake of the Tide Mother's wrath, the government of Accordo has declared a state of national emergency. Mm. On behalf of the nation, I would like to express our relief that King Noctis has survived. The towering waves that swept over Altisha left great destruction in their wake. Yeah, so that's... Take time to rebuild our lives. That said, the damage done to our fair capital would have been far more severe were it not for the aid of the King and the Oracle. First Secretary Klostra also pledged the government would continue its search for Lady Luna Freya, whose current mm. whereabouts remain unknown. High Commander Flore has been deemed accountable for Altitia's tragedy and sentenced to execution. Ah, this Lord is big. Lord Ravis Knox Flore was promoted to the Imperial Army's top post amid the turmoil of the failed peace talks. The High Commander's primary responsibility was restoring stability to Lucis. Yet his campaign against the Hydrian... Hey, thanks for the sub for six months. Gee, thank you. And collateral damage to the area. Uh, so that, that was a really big radio um, uh, message right there. Ravis is going to be executed. So Luna's dead and Ravis will be put to death. So easy to miss that. Um, yeah, want to want to give due. Uh, thank you, Big G Rocks. One, two, three, four, subbing for six months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Oh, we've already the heard that. Has a Hello. I know. It's not. I mean, what do you think I'm? I would do. I'm her fiance. Well, was. Eh. Raleighan Medal of Distinction. That's fun. He stretches an arm and a leg for bit slots. That's imperial quality for you. Should have let a chef from a coil handle catering. Yeah. I think this game does a really good job of, um, you know, kind of keeping you on your toes a little bit. You're not sure who is safe. I mean, Luna, di Luna died, and Ignis um, is injured at this point. Um, you've lost. We've. I mean. We kind of have a body count in my class. We're like, who's next? Give me a break. I'm just hungry, is all. Okay, we're not getting in the middle of that. Um, looks like we're getting closer. Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. So this chapter is all about the question: um, How does a king become a king? without their prophet. Um, can a king become a king without a prophet? I also want to say that um, we've talked about how this is a parallel for the story of King David in the Old Testament. And um, after, um, after Samuel's speech in 1 Samuel chapter 12, um, Saul... Um, kind of goes off the rails. Um, Saul is the current king, and he is rejected by God after um, kind of falling apart three times. You can read that for yourself in 1 Samuel uh, 13, 14, 15. And then 1 Samuel 16, um, Samuel goes, the prophet, goes to um, a young shepherd boy named David, and he anoints him as king. In chapter 9 of this game, Luna, after her speech, anoints Noctis as the king. We see that as her dying breath, her dying wish. But he's not yet really a king on the throne, right? And neither is David in 1 Samuel. And what we see after that is David's pursuit of the throne when he is being um, kind of pursued by Saul as well. Um, in the same way, uh, Dave, uh, Noctis is kind of experiencing that as well. It's also important to note that Samuel dies 
in the book of 1 Samuel before David becomes king. Please help me. Huh? Oh, please, sir. Could you help me look for Yelro, Jaro, Becky, and Joe? Help you look for who, 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 and who? My darling baby chocobos. I thought I'd take them on a trip to see the world, but now they're off seeing it without me. They oh can't have gosh. gone too far. They can barely flap their wings. Oh, they must be so scared. This girl Won't has no idea. Them? Yeah, okay. Jeez. That we are A, the king, Prince King Noctis, and that we just lost our fiance. <laughs> She's like, please help us find our baby chocobos. Here's one. Literally, it was right there. Girl, open your eyes. Yeah, Samuel, he's he's furious, but God does say to him, um, you know, I've chosen a man after my own heart. So, hey, thank you so much, Rex Mohawk, man. Thank you so much for the uh, follow. Welcome. Appreciate you. The only way to, uh, the only thing better than a chocobo is a baby chocobo. Well, isn't that true? Um, okay, I heard a baby chocobo. Oh, there it is. Let's go. Nothing like grieving by helping somebody find their pet chocobos. It'll still be some while until we reach Tenebrae. Hopefully we hear some good news about Lady Linafreya before then. I hope she's okay. Oh, it ran right to me. Thank thank you, pet choco chick. I'm hoping for another miracle. Uh yeah, I mean it's a little crazy that um That they lost Luna in Kingslave, and then, you know, they found her, and now she's she's dead again. So, okay, so this is kind of the landscape we're in. Cortanica is um, kind of a desert area, um, but you can look even further, and you kind of see snowy mountains over that way. We're in a very different land, not Lucis anymore. Uh, okay, are there any Choco Chicks over here? I'm not usually one for finding the chocobo chicks, but we're going to try to help Noctis feel a little bit better. Is that a chocobo, or is that just a dead end? Looks, it's not moving, so yeah, that was just a bag or something. What are you, though? A mega potion. Well, we like that, I guess. Oh, yeah, this is a good view here. So you can kind of look down here. You see that it's uh, sort of like a mining town, mining uh, area. The empire used to to own this, but now it's just an abandoned old mine. <laughs> so if anything would help him feel better, yeah, fair, Senorita, fair. Wait, wait, wait! I hear him. I haven't seen any fill blossoms around here. The climate's more accommodating in Tenebrae. Well, that's true. Oh, chocobos. Oh, here's a pamphlet. Cortanica, desolate district in the eastern reaches of the western continent, the railway that transects imperial territory that still stops at this station, but few board the Magna Forcia uh, from Cortanica these days. The elevated railroad platform offers an expansive view of the surrounding area. Retaining walls hold back soil on the Sucarpe Mountain slopes while gas and oil fields pepper the ground below. The famed Fodna Castino can also be seen from the station with an elevator providing direct access. Niflheim sought to recover and restore the magic technology of old as the key to ensuring the nation's future prosperity. But mass production of said magic technology required enormous quantities of oil and coal. Thus, the empire set its sights on Cartanica, a once lively town rife with natural fuels. After the Empire had had its fill, however, the city was left a shell of its former self, drained of its resources and devoid of human life. Okay, good to know a little bit more about where we are. Um, I, ha I can hear the chocobos. I do not see the chocobos. It may be on the, the train here. Ah, there it is. Ah, 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 ah. Got you. Oh, what are you? 
Bodna Casino Quarry boasting the richest ore reserves in all of Niflheim. After the mine shut down, a variety of wild plants dug their roots into the rubble, defying the natural terrain and gradually transforming the arid basin into a makeshift marshland. Although the quarry lies in imperial territory, the mines are said to house a royal tomb. That's what we like. Local legends say that the oldest kings in Eos is interred within, but many Kartanikans dismiss these claims as merely mere fabrications, tall tales trumped up by Imperials trying to appropriate the legacy of Lucis for themselves. The truth about the tomb lies somewhere beneath the silt and soil. Some suppose the demon-deterring mausoleum was erected as a sign of friendship between kingdom and empire in an age when the two nations enjoyed amicable relations. The scars of war are visible across the land, while symbols of the peace remain hidden from our sight. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. We got it. Alright. Oh, there we go. Alright, no more chocobos, no more... I, I'm sure there's one. If we hear him, we'll save them, but I'll let's get on with it. They closed casino off to the public. I'll bet you don't either. These spelunkers found something fierce down there. Don't believe everything you hear. Alright, I'll be the judge of that. No wonder the tree grew where it did. Hmm. Hello, hello. Um, what do you want? If the monsters down there don't kill you first, the smell probably will. Thanks. What? Was there a gas leak or something? No one knows for sure, and I'm not risking my life going down to find out. If you want to risk yours, though, then be my guest. Hmm. Okay. Well, I will. Hey, Prompto. What's up, buddy? Oh. I take it you've arrived safely, Highness? Yeah. yeah. Now I've just got to find out where this royal tomb is. Look no further than the Fodina Castino. There should be an elevator the leading down to the quarry from the station. I just Roger. read that Good book. That's funny. And hold your nose. What? Thanks for the advice, I guess. Everybody's really caught up with this whole um, stench thing. All right, Prompto. How we doing, Bubba? He's looking sad. There's an elevator that should take us straight down to the mine. I wonder if the tomb's inside. Hmm. Well, those two went to grab a bite in that glorified dining car they call a restaurant. Well, I mean, I guess I'll go see them then. Though I don't think Gladio wants to see me. Hmm. Where is the dining car? I think it's way down here. Um, I need Noctis to learn to sprint. He is a little slow. But that might be because I've been playing uh, Elden Ring and I just ride a horse everywhere. Hello? Um, there is no dining car here. Back this way. You know, funny story fits, I've never seen the Polar Express. To be honest, I've never read the book. I just know it's a train that takes you to, I think, the North Pole. And Tom Hanks is in it. Hmm. Cool. Oh my gosh, where is the dining car? I just want to see my boys. Even if, oh, okay, thank you. If you're anywhere near the magazine, it's going to get you. Huh. Okay, you know what? I don't know how to get back on the... <laughs> I don't know how to get back on the train. Oh, I was looking at the wrong dang train. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh my gosh. Come on. You can tell how many times I've tried to get on this train. Okay, let's go. Hey guys. Oh, did they? Well, Gladio's ignoring me and Ignis. Well, Ignis can't see me, so I guess I'm going to give him a pass. Welcome. Hey. What's on your minds? 
Well, there's what a lot on that boys be having? Um, We're going to have this chicken finger dinner. Got it. Mmm. That do look good right now, though. Would eat. 10 out of 10. Oh, jeez. We'll see you around. Well, I mean, Christmas in July, I guess. But... Okay, let's... Let's just go. We're, we're done. We're done trying to make friends. Uh, I don't want to talk to that guy. We are... We are done. Head down. Oh. Ready to set out. Mm. Should we take him along or leave him behind? Take him along or leave him behind. Uh, I mean, it's kind of unsafe. And he's injured. Let's leave him behind. Don't worry about me. Oh. Okay. <sighs> it feels like Noctis might have been like, stay behind, so. All right, down into the, the trenches here. Well, we made it to the quarry, but our destination likely lies deeper inside. All right, here we go. Feeling a little out of my element. We're a foreign species in this environment. Mind we don't end up prey. Right, good tip. Ignis walks at a slower pace due to his eye injury. Be sure not to leave him behind. Pudding's bad. Watch your step oh, as best no. I can. Go at your own pace. We'll wait. Okay, Ignis. Is it too much to ask the royal procession sticks together? Too much to ask you to shut it? Ooh. Definitely seeing the, um, the effects of the stress of all this. Uh, okay, how are we going to get down? Let's go this way, fellas. Oh, no. Come on. Uh, that's where we need to go. Okay. All right, Ignis, you're doing all right. All right, let's go. Oh, no, Ignis. Oh, no. Oh, let's get him. Come on, bub. Oh, no. He's not going to do well in this water. Oh! Don't push yourself, Ignis. Oh. Okay. You can come right here. Right over here, boys. Right over here. The tomb must be down below. Whoa! Careful, Ignis. <sighs> right. Ah, uh, poor Ignis. Um, this looks like something I could do. Nope, it is not. Okay, down here. They parked here? Huh. Wish we could write him a ticket. Oh, man. Nothing but a giant roadblock. Eh, ironic for a vehicle. If we get his motor running, perhaps we can move it out of the way. There's got to be an on button around here somewhere. Okay. Might as well start searching, then. 
Noctis is not in the best of moods right now. now where is that? Uh oh. Oh man, they are so slow. I mean, understandable, but also. Uh, here's a button. This is. Oh, but we need the key. Right, 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 right. We, we know that. Come on, boys. Hmm. I like how this dungeon is dark. Um, just because, you know, Ignis is blind. This looks promising. We're having a hard time is seeing. It we'll see. I bet we'll need a key if that other button is right. Well, customary jump first. Okay. Oh. Say, Smog. What are you stopping for? I'm not. Let's see here. In case of power failure, use backup generators. There's a key in the shed. So where is this shed? Well, if we knew where it was, we wouldn't be looking. Which means it's got to be somewhere we haven't looked yet. Watch out, Iggy. These boys ah, are having so. problems. Yeah. Oh, Ignis. Watch yourself. Ignis may drown. Oh, Ignis. Oh. They do a good job. Alone, huh? Ugh. They do a good job of making you really feel the pain of like having Ignis in the party right now. We love Ignis, but he's kind of a danger. Hang on, haven't we already been down here? This is not correct. Uh, right, we need to go find the shed. Oh, I'm sorry, Gladio. Oh. Like, put him on your back, Gladio. Why are we making the blind man walk through a swamp? Okay, we good? Uh, this looks promising. Um, guys, I mean, I don't want to get too far ahead, be yelled at again. Okay, where's the shed? Can I see up here? There's a monster. Okay. All right. Can I go yet? Let's go. Gonna have to deal with Gladio. Gladio. Oh, weakness. Oh, dodging. Gotcha. 
rooms are always in the darnest places. Glad you're taking this seriously. Oh my gosh. It does have a creepy feel. Just wait till we get to later hey, chapters. Wait up. Oh, guys. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't call this part creepy. I would call this sad and tragic. Just waiting on our, our buddy that can't take care of himself anymore. Um... What, guys? Let's go. I'll try to take care of him quick so Ignis doesn't get hurt. Ooh, about bounced ourselves right off. Okay, can we climb up here? Is there a shack up here? And the answer is no. All right, Ignis, don't don't try to climb up here, buddy. Oh, there's a shack. There's a shack. Let's go. Let's go. I found it. Up there. Oh. Yeah, grief and, and running in the mud in the dark. It, it is a, a story of grief, I think, for sure. Yeah. Um, and Fitz, you're right. I mean, he's a jerk. He's a jerk. Like that. Where is the generator? Didn't you read the sign, Iggy? Not funny. So we'll get a chance to have a conversation with uh, Gladio in a little bit, but um. Ooh. Shall we camp? So much for sticking together. Oh, Gladio! Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh gosh, don't. Prompto, you're leading him off a cliff. You have eyes, Prompto. Okay, come on, boys. Somebody grab him by the hand, please. It's for his own good. Oh, Gladio, you chose to come near me, really? Um, it's like one in the morning. Let's let's give it a rest. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna camp. I'm exhausted. I bet you are, buddy. Ugh. Oh no. Hmm. Ooh. Gladio chose not to sit by Noctis. Uh, or even be around us at all. Oh, we have chilled food tin or cup noodles. We could make Gladio happy with cup noodles. Should we give him the cup noodles, y'all? Or are we going to make him pay for being a jerk? You want to give him cup noodles? Maybe it'll soften him. Kill him with kindness. Well, we'll see. Mm. It's the ultimate flavor experience. Oh. Took more photos today. Uh, you want to see? No, not really. Yeah, oh. uh, of course. Sad camping. Oh. Don't see any pictures of Ignis. Probably respectful. Yeah. Cup noodles. It's Gladio's favorite, the ultimate flavor experience. I should have gotten cup noodles for dinner tonight. That would have been very on brand, very thematic. We should well, get moving. At least it's daylight you now. Okay, I'm fine. 
Don't mind me. Okay, we're just we're just trying to look out for each other, fellas. Um Okay, let's go this way. Okay, we gotta get away from that beeping. Try thinking of others. Oh, Oh man, guys. Poor Prompto. Nobody wanted to see his pictures. It's the only thing he loves, besides puppies. Alright. Oh, I guess Prompto never got to, to meet Luna after he wanted to, ever since he uh, returned her dog. That's sad. Let's go ahead and kill these guys. Alright, Iggy, where are you at? I'm trying to help you out here. Alright, just showing off. Oh no, no, help him, Prompto. Oh my gosh, where did. <laughs> the struggle is real. It's so sad. Oh, big frog. Oh, Gladio. Oh my gosh. Come on. We just gotta go, guys. We just gotta go. A gigantoid. Done. Well, no more frogs, that's for sure. Okay, here we go. Here's one. Where is it? Right here. How does it look? She's wired and ready. Give it a go. And don't blow it up. Oh, thanks for the advice. Maybe we can just like turn down the sarcasm a little bit, fellas. Did We're not work. in the mood. Yep. One more to go. Seriously? Since when are there two of them? Can it? Let's just get this thing moving so we can get on with our mission. All right. We need to go all the way around. Okay. Back down here. Oh wait, we gotta slow down, gotta slow down. Don't wanna get yelled at by our crowns guard again. All right. I'll take care of these guys while we wait on them. No you don't. Good thing I'm so strong. Uh, I think the saddest thing is seeing Ignis try to fight in the middle of uh, of of this. Okay, they're they're almost here. They're almost here. It's a different kind of dungeon, that's for sure. We've got the power. Might not have it for long though. Hurry up and move the machine. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. If I can just run ahead and do it. Try thinking of others. Oh, Gladio, I know. I am. I'm trying to get y'all to move less. Oh. 
but I'm having trouble with the stairs. Okay. All right, here we go. Maybe. There we go. And now we have a path. Did you hear that? Sounds like we're clear. Grand. Then let's move. What do you think? We're going to have a, a choice in a minute to be agreeable with Gladio or to kind of be combative. What should we do? Michael, my spring break was pretty good. We did a lot of um, service work, volunteering. Um, a bunch of my students and I did. And so it was pretty good. Pretty good. Hooray. This place is kind of pretty, though. Okay. Fitz, we'll hold it against him. Hold up. You sure you're ready for this? You got what it takes? <laughs> to do what? To face your ancestors and convince them to lend you their strength. Got a long road ahead. Can you see this through to the end? Um, we'll show frustration. Because that really feels like where Noctis is. As if I have a choice. Mm -hmm. You think I like the idea of people sacrificing themselves for me? One after the other? Enough. Forget it. I thought you'd accepted your duty. I thought wrong. Gladio's words with a fire and knocks his heart. Get mad. I mean, you can understand what Gladio's doing for sure. We did it together. <laughs> we did it together. Yeah, we're a real team, aren't we, Prompto? This cave is huge. The tomb's further in. You want to wait here? Alone. Here. Not what I said. Ooh. Oh, man. Something stinks around here. Don't slip and fall in whatever that is. Hmm. Royal Tomb's gotta be around here somewhere. The question is, where? Hmm. See ya! Whoa, not this. Um, like over here? No. What about over there? Looks pretty to me, to me. To me, to me. Oh no. Ah, oh, yeah, it's under this big tree. Um, next to these balls. What is this? I hate eggs. Oh, Do we really want to know what's back there? That looks like a mouth. Is that its face? What? What is it? Something real bad. Ugh. I'm covered in drool. Ah. Let's kill it with fire. Somebody help me. It's useless. What do we do? This might be a good time to panic. There must be a way. Marlboro has gone berserk. 
Okay, time to flee. Get over here, guys. Feed me, Seymour. Okay, let's use our uh, armature. Oh, no. with the most incredible throw from a blind man ever. All right. Is it dead? It is. And it's all thanks to Iggy. Iggy, you saved us. <sighs> Seriously. We'd be plant food if it weren't for you. Happy to help. What? No royal comet whisking them just makes a mess. Better fry them. The eggs? Okay. Audrey too. Mm. I think we found it. Just wish they found a better place to build it. Tomb of the Warrior. A strong smell to guide him. Fair. All right, let's haul ass. Yeah, let's. let's. A moment. Is everything okay? It bloody well isn't. And I won't suffer this pointless bickering in silence any longer. <sighs> Let's be frank. My vision hasn't improved, and probably won't. Yet in spite of this, I would remain with you all. To the very end. <laughs> Sorry, but I object. War is a matter of life and death. But we'll be there. It's not about us looking out for him. Uh-huh. Well, then he should be free to choose. There's more to it than just what he wants. I know full well. I won't ask you to slow down. If I cannot keep up, I will bow out. <sighs> hmm. What says his majesty? Noct, you are king. One cannot lead by standing still. The king pushes onward, always, accepting the consequences and never looking back. Gladio, Noct will take his rightful place, but only once he's ready. Have it your way. We're still taking a big risk. We better all be ready. Notice that's what Regis says to Ignis uh, at the beginning of episode Ignis. The king does not lead by standing still and all that. Ignis continuing to be the best. He's good, isn't he? He's good. They all have their moments. Um, and I love that Noctis needs each of them. You know, like each one contributes something unique to to him and what's been in danger is that entire group kind of dismantling you guys mind if we stop in tenebrae <laughs> might as well hop off if it helps him move on <laughs> mm. 
So one of the interesting things about this chapter, I, I think, is that we really see that Noctis is, um, he's struggling after the death of Luna, but he's also struggling not just with his own grief, but he's struggling with his relationships, the relationships Time that have gotten him here back on track. in the first place. Next stop, Tenebrae. Yeah, over here trying to psychoanalyze him. Well, let's do a little bit of that then. Um, so in my class, uh, one of the things that we talk about, and I'm not going to go into the full deal because, you know, you're, you're not here for the full class sort of thing. Um, and uh, I also want to have discussion with my class in lecture. But uh, we have, um, I'm going to pull something up online. This is a resource that I use to kind of discuss the dynamics of dealing with uh, issues that arise. And I see this at play throughout chapter 10. Let me pull it up real quick. So this comes from a uh, group known as the Arbinger Institute. It's a, uh, oops, it is a group that um, they put out a book called The Anatomy of Peace several years ago. And uh, the book itself is fine, but my favorite part of the book is this diagram. And, um, Whenever I play chapter 10, it reminds me of this particular pyramid because it says, uh, this pyramid says that whenever something goes wrong, there's a relational conflict. The first thing we want to do is correct somebody. And that's up here at the very top of the pyramid. We want to deal with the things that go wrong by correcting. But just like, you know, when we try to just tell somebody what they're doing wrong and correct them, it, it never goes well if we haven't done some foundational work. And so in order to correct somebody, you have to be able to teach and communicate with them. But you can't just go around teaching and communicating. You also have to, in order to have a reason to be listened to, you have to listen and learn. And by listening and learning, you're then able to teach and communicate. But you can't just listen and learn straight out of the blue. You actually have to have a relationship with the person. So the first thing that you ought to do when there's an issue to be addressed is have a relationship with that person. What happens if you don't have a relationship with that person? Well, it's probably not your problem to the, the degree that you can do anything about it. But you build a relationship and by um, in order to build the relationship, you also have to have some relationship with people that have influence on the person. So uh, this is something really interesting that I see in this particular chapter of this game Ignis has relationships with Gladio and with Noctis. Noctis is trying to grieve. Gladio is trying to correct. Um, and they're not listening to each other. Noctis wants Gladio to get off his back. Ignis, or excuse me, Gladio wants Noctis to, to shape up. Um, Prompto is trying to provide comic relief and none of it's really working for them. But Ignis is the one that breaks through that. He's the one that's help, uh, able to ultimately correct the group because he has relationships with everyone. He's built a relationship with Gladio, with Noctis, and with uh, Prompto. And because of that, he's helping them to listen and learn to one another's concerns. And he's able to help teach and communicate, ultimately leading to some correction here. I think it's a really interesting piece. At the very base of this um, is something that I try to talk about with my classes and saying that um, the key to conflict resolution, if you're on one side and another group or another person is on the other side, to get out of the box, um, which essentially means you stop labeling them as the other or the enemy. Um, stop saying it's us against them, but instead you start saying it's us and them and we're in this together. Um, and, and that's what Ignis does. He breaks down the idea that it's Gladio versus Noctis, it's Gladio and Noctis and Prompto and Ignis for that matter. So that's a, a, a quick three minute version of this uh, that, that we kind of do in the class. Uh, but to me, that helps us think through this chapter in a, in a cool way. One thing that's interesting to, to you is that this is a whole lot of emotional labor. Um, you can really only do this with people who really matter to you and only so often. No, you're absolutely right. You cannot do this with people that you don't already have relationship with. Um, yeah. Uh, it, do, it doesn't work when dealing with strangers because there's just not the time. You're right. You're right. Um, there's not the time to, uh, you know, get, uh, I'll, I'll pull up the thing again. There's not the time to get out of the box or build relationships um, all the way um, with, with people. 
um, that you don't already have a relationship with. There's just not time in, in our lives. Um, and especially in the age of like Twitter and social media, uh, Facebook and all the stuff, like we can see something online and the, the notion of like we see misinformation or we see people that are just kind of being terrible, right? We want to immediately correct. And you know that that goes as well on Twitter as, as you can imagine, right? It, it goes pretty poorly. Um, and there's just not time to teach and communicate everyone. There's not time to listen and learn to every perspective. And that's why I kind of isolate my own use of this to the people that I already have a relationship with. Um, I, ultimately, it's me saying what's in my scope of influence. And for Noctis, it, for him, it's, you know, who is in my scope of influence? Well, it's Ignis Gladio and Prompto. Um, and ultimately, he will have to do that for an entire nation, for an entire thing. But I think that the biggest thing, the biggest thing that all of us can do and Noctis can do, especially for the people in his kingdom one day that he does not know, is stop labeling them as, as the other. Um, I don't want to get on a lot of soapbox uh, um, thinking right now, but this is one of the biggest issues that we face in our nation right now, right? Um, we're, we're divided politically, um, an us and them sort of mentality. We're divided according to um, ideologies on medicine and on war, on economics, and um, you know, just turn on the news at any given segment. And the key to, to building relationships, teaching, communicating, and maybe correcting um, one of the issues that we have, at least in the United States, because I know some of you may be watching from, from elsewhere, one of the keys to this is to get out of the box and, and stop labeling and, and putting others into boxes that are different than the ones that we would put ourselves in. If we can't do that and stop thinking in terms of us versus them, then there's not really a lot of hope. And that is kind of the lesson that Noctis is, is learning here with Gladio and uh, with the others. But they seem to have done okay during chapter 10. <sighs> I finally get to visit Lady Luna Freya's home. Hmm, Tenebrae. Ready to depart, Noct? I guess we are. Yeah, Fitz, I would say that that's a really important piece uh, spiritually. So for a second, I, I will speak more from a pastoral side than a professor side, um, just for a second. Um, you know, when it comes to the, the things in our hearts, when it comes to the, the grief and the resentment and the frustration that we feel, that's a disconnect from other people. And I think that one of the, the key attributes of any sense of religion or spirituality, and especially Christianity and Judaism, is the sense of being able to live at peace with other people. Um, and to, to spiritualize it even more, to hold a grudge and to be resentful against another person that's made in the image of God is to essentially disconnect um, God from God's self. Um, you know, we, we can have frustrations, we can have disagreements with other people but um you know for my for my own well-being and peace of heart um i have to live at peace with um with the people around me uh thanks michael i'm i'm glad glad to hear that i found this to be really true in my life um and it's so true for a leader right it's so true for for a leader like noctis whether you are going to be a king or you know a manager one day it's the ability to live at peace with the person that is driving you up the wall, <laughs> the person that makes your blood boil when you think about them and, and you have like imaginary conversations in your head tr trying to get one over on them. Uh, learning to live at peace is one of the, the biggest things that I, I think that I've learned. And uh, a lot of that has to do with my, my own personal faith um, because I feel less connected to other people and therefore I also feel less connected to God when I am holding grudges and unforgiveness in my heart. So. There is that. Thank you, Final Fantasy 15 and Chapter 10 of what's going on. Didn't think about all this type of isolation with issues and emotions. Yeah, Michael, it's, it's a game changer. If you want to read more, um, I would suggest uh, the Arbinger Institute Anatomy of Peace. All right, let's hop aboard the train, and then we will finish up Chapter 10. All set for boarding? All set, my friend. You cannot return. We're ready. Yeah. Well, let's roll. In that case... Hop aboard. We'll be leaving shortly. We're here for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let us help you. And we're off! Are we clear? Crystal. Hey, watch your step. You're not pushing onward? 
Not at his expense. Come on, Gladiator. Fair enough. <laughs> Did you hear that? That would be Arden, um, and, and he is humming the Chocobo theme. Um, he's humming the Chocobo theme, <laughs> which is a huge foreshadowing for the next time that we play. We're going to be playing chapters 11 and 12 on Tuesday, and y'all, so, 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 so much happens uh, in chapters 11 and 12. Um, we are really uh, kind of ramping up for, uh, for the final stages of this story. Uh, next week on Tuesday, we're going to play 11 and 12. Um, and stay tuned. We may actually play uh, episode prompto as well on Tuesday night. But if not, we're definitely going to be uh, playing uh, episode prompto next Thursday. Um, tonight, though, we, we close out with, um, with uh, chapter 10. Um, the group is hanging by a thread. Noctis is still in grief. Gladio has got a chip on his shoulder. And Ignis is, is bringing them back together. Prompto's comic relief. But uh, Arden also has some things up his sleeve. So we will pick that up on Tuesday. As we leave tonight, um, I would hope that, uh, that, that you know, this, to me, I, as you can tell, uh, Final Fantasy XV is a little bit more than a game. I, it, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, it speaks to, to different parts of my life, including my relationships, my faith, my spirituality, all that kind of stuff. And I hope that you're, you're finding it encouraging as well. Um, Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Thanks for the follows. Thanks for the subs. If you did that, thank you so much. And I, I just appreciate you guys so much. Uh, it's always great to spend my evenings with you. Can't wait to be with you again next week. Uh, Y'all, we've got great stuff. Make plans to be here on Tuesday night for Chapter 7 because we are going to deep dive into some good, uh, meaty sort of stuff. Um, but whatever you do tonight and for the rest of the weekend, uh, as Regis would say, walk tall, my friends. Uh, Y'all stay, uh, stay safe, and we will see you soon. Have a great weekend. Bye, y'all.